Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Welcome to the July 6th meeting of the Rotary Club of Gainesville. I want to welcome everyone. If you are on Zoom with us right now, we want you to please identify yourself in the chat. And without further ado, Pete Enwall, you're circulating somewhere. I do, I do, I do, I do. I do. Well, um, it's a new year. Congratulations. I hope you had a good fourth. And so the new uh, administration has asked that we uh, consider or ask, has asked that we begin to celebrate uh, national whatever day it is. And there's a, there's a website and there national week or whatever, whatever is appropriate. And so from this, for this year, we're going to be celebrating an appropriate day or an appropriate week, given what the website says is, is what the week is. So this week, is National Nude Recreation Week. <laughs> I have been asked to convey to you that you, we would we'd ask you not to celebrate until you leave the meeting. <laughs> and that there'll be a parade forming in the parking lot if you care to join. And those of you who are participating on Zoom are welcome to go ahead now, as long as you're not in front of the camera. So with that, a new year begins. Uh, and we're going to sing, what are we going to sing? God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam. Please join me in pledging allegiance to the flag. There it is. Thank you very much, Pete. At this time, we would like to call forward the Reverend Catherine Fluck Price to please give our indication today. Catherine. Thank you all for the opportunity to be here today. It's our first day back in person uh, since COVID, and so we are grateful to be here and also especially today as we in, have a new installation for president of David and uh, we serve as his pastors. My husband and I are pastors for David and Megan and Cecil and so we're glad to be here. Let's pray together. Gracious and good God, as we gather together today as Rotarians and friends, we recognize how diverse we are in our gifts and abilities, our backgrounds and our dreams, our life experiences and our vocations. And we give thanks that you take this diversity and our uniqueness and mobilize us together for good. We pray today that you would use the knowledge, generosity, leadership and creativity of this Rotary Club to make our nation and world and especially our community, a better place. Today, as we begin a new Rotary year, may we build on the foundation of the past, particularly the perseverance and innovation required in the pandemic. As we install a new president, further our commitment to focus this coming year on serving to change lives. We give you thanks for David Gracie for his willingness to serve and commitment to lead, pour out your blessing on him, undergird him with strength and stamina, and fill him with wisdom and compassion. And now bless our time together. Be present in every conversation and lead us toward a deeper commitment to service. Amen.
Thank you very much, Catherine. That was beautiful. At this time, any um, visiting Rotarians or introductions of guests, if you could please stand. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians and guests. I have some guests I would like to introduce today. And um, Ben Campen, if you would just quick, quick stand. This is my, my good friend, Ben Campen, member of the Greater Gainesville Club, a longtime close friend of mine. To his left is Elena Frazier, also a very close friend of mine. Cecil Gracie, if you would stand up. That's my son, Cecil. And he is flanked by my wife, Megan Gracie. Finally, to Megan's right is my good friend, Stephen Tanner. And um, we'll, we'll see about, um, I'll just say he wound up here a little early. He didn't, I think he got the times messed up, but he wound up helping with setup and stuff. So he's, I think he's trying to earn a, earn a membership. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Hi, Rotarians. I'm Richard Allen. And our, my guest today, uh, Tim Williams, architect with Walker Architects over on 13th Street. And Tim was here last week with us as well. So visit number two. Thanks. All right, thank you very much. And we welcome all our guests and visiting Rotarians. Um, in just a moment, we're gonna have announcements. I had a couple of things I was going to share. Um, one is, um, first of all, we hope everyone had a wonderful fourth. And um, I ran across a quote, uh, actually for many of you who know LaVita Brown, our beloved uh, commissioner, uh, she posted something. She said, I don't know where this quote came from, but, I, but she wanted to share it. And so I wanna share it. And it has a lot to do with freedom and the 4th of July and, being Rotarians. It says freedom is not the right thing to do anything you like. It's the right to do right. And for some reason that just resonated to me with our special day today as we uh, have uh, David um, uh, coming on board. And I just wanted to share that with the 4th of July and, and talking about freedom and do-goodery as we are trying to do good as Rotarians. And then the other thing was I wanted to congratulate Colleen. Would you stand your first official day of retirement? She says she's available to run all of our errands. So can I see you after the meeting? Okay, so now we're gonna do announcements. I understand Marie Collins and Naomi are coming forward to talk about Matheson Fellowship. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, I want to thank TJ and Greg Young for arranging our first indoor fun and fellowship. And this was held at the Matheson Museum a couple of weeks ago. Also, thanks to the 20 or so Rotarians who attended. We appreciated you coming out. We were treated to a presentation by Caitlin from the museum telling us about the history of Gainesville, which was quite informative. We then took a tour of a couple of the buildings on the premises, with every, which everyone enjoyed, especially the home. Lastly, we took a short walk over to the Matheson Library on University Avenue, where all the historic documents are kept. So much to peruse there and looking forward to visiting there again. So I thank you for your attention, and we are hoping more Rotarians will attend our future fun and fellowships. And with that, Naomi, the floor is yours. <laughs> I just have a few brief comments to make, and this is mainly for our newer members. Rotary has basically three events, the first being meetings. And here today, uh, some of us are attending here at the lovely and safe Cade Museum, and some are um, uh, watching on Zoom from the comfort of their home or office or maybe on vacation somewhere. The second thing is service projects. And for service projects, we give our hearts and our hands to help others in the community or beyond uh, those who have needs and that we can uh, help them with. 
And the third and final thing is fun and fellowship, or I like to say fun and friendship, because this is really where you make friends in Rotary. This is where you have make new friends or you strengthen your existing friends. And it's like in high school, you have all your classmates in high school, but you never get a chance to talk to them because you're in class and the teacher won't let you talk. Here, you just come to a meeting and you're just getting a good conversation going and bing, the bell goes and you gotta stop talking and be quiet. So, um, just like in school, it's not in class that you make your friends, it's outside of the classroom that you make those friends. And um, so that's why fun and fellowship is so important uh, for building good friendships and we can all use and need more friends and better friends. Thank you. Thank you very much, Naomi and Marie. Uh, TJ, you have an announcement for us about uh, Ben Hill Griffin? Stadium fellowship announcement. Um, I'll get on to the, the football stadium, but I wanted everybody to remember last year we did 620 hours of volunteer service. I didn't know that Matt was tracking that. Um, he texted me after a service event and I figured he just wanted to hear from me but it's great that we actually track it. Uh, I challenge everybody this year, let's get to a thousand. There's more than 200 of us in this club. That's less than five hours a person for the entire year. Uh, we have a number of different opportunities this month, starting with the school board. You received it in your bulletin, uh, three or four hours one morning over a course of two weeks, you can go and help and, and really make a difference in the community for the school board. Beyond that, we have Bread of the Mighty this weekend. I'm gonna send out an update. They changed it from Friday to Saturday, um, but please take those opportunities, uh, give a little bit of time so we can get to a thousand hours this year. And then finally, our Ben Hill Griffin Stadium tour is going to be Thursday, July 29th at 3.30 p.m. Um, Linda's gonna take care of the parking. So if you get a ticket, if you get a ticket, oh, sorry. If you get a ticket, Linda will pay for it and we'll be good to go, um, but please come see us Thursday, July 29th, 3.30, get a tour of Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. I don't know if anybody heard the rest of it, but it was just me talking about Matt. You did great. Thank you, TJ. Appreciate all that you do to keep us um, informed of all the wonderful fellowship opportunities. So now we get to recognize everyone who has July birthdays. There's quite a few of us, including uh, President David. So I'm going to read the list. And Pete, if I could uh, bring you back up to sing happy birthday in just a moment. Okay, I'm going to read the list quickly. You'd stand when we, when we, so we can recognize you. Cynthia Miller, Chad King, uh, Becky Farber, Paul Ferraro, uh, Bobby Hall, Maggie Combs, Jay Norquist, Tim Sorrell, Jason Kaysen, Kip Harrison, Nisha Chopra, Deborah Newell, Susan Siegel, uh, just past president, Matt Matthew. Yep, has a birthday as well. Uh, Joseph Orr, Denise Ferraro, John Graham, Reed Brown, Bob Watson, Rick Gonzalez Rothy, Ernie Higby, Dan Boyd, Sandy Evans, and our president, David Gracie. If you all would please down and let us recognize the July Rotarians with July birthdays. Come on, Pete. So in celebration of uh, National Recreation, <laughs> nah. okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, fellow Rotarians. Happy birthday to you. And as Charlie would say, and many more. Glad you're doing that because one thing I told David I cannot sing so thank you very much Pete okay so um, next we want to move forward with our program I'm going to call Grace our also past president Grace Horvath is going to um, oversee our officer introduction so Grace thank you very much if I could have our incoming officers, please come up and join me here. That would be wonderful. David, uh, Greg Young, 
uh, Linda is should be here. Jeff, well, Jeff Sims is sitting over there. Excellent. Much better to be surrounded by friends than standing here all by yourself. So thank you very much for inviting me to do this. It really is an honor to be asked to install the new officers of the Rotary Club of Gainesville. Incoming officers, you have been chosen by your club because of the leadership which you have shown. This is an indication of the esteem and confidence of the members that you will provide leadership for as this club works to improve the community and the world in which we live. We believe you will uphold the high traditions of this club, that you will give the best of your executive ability to the furtherance of the interest of this club, and that you will carry forward the object of Rotary to encourage and foster the ideals of service as a basis of worthy enterprise through the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service, the promotion of high ethical standards in business and professions, to application of ideas of service by every Rotarian and the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace through fellowship and service. That's a long objective sentence. <laughs> I know of few people in this day and age who have an abundance of time and extra energy to devote to projects outside of their work and family. So it is especially important to note that you have already gone the extra mile in agreeing to serve and lead this club in its many activities. My charge to you, the officers of the Rotary Club of Gainesville, is to look at this Rotary year as one where you must take action. Each of you can have a profound effect on someone this year either here in Gainesville or in some foreign land. There is a world crying for help, and Rotary, through your efforts, must answer that call. President David, you are charged with setting the tone and creating a vision for this club. You hold the most important position in Rotary. If you are successful, your club is successful, and Rotary International expands its ability to increase world peace and understanding. Set your goals high. Rally your leadership team to work towards those goals and always be willing to face the challenges that will arise this year with a fresh and positive outlook. I know you're going to have a great year. Greg, as president-elect, you are in a position to provide the president with strong support. Use this year to create your support organization with an eye toward continuing that strong leadership next year when you become president. Give President David the support that you would like when you become president. Jeff, as treasurer, your responsibility is to each and every club member. Your task is to ensure the club funds are applied properly and in a timely fashion. Rotary's greatest asset is the integrity by which it is known. Your integrity must be beyond reproof to continue the confidence that we all place in the funds we give to Rotary and its programs. You must set the standard for this club in that regard. Linda, the club secretary is vital to the performance of the Rotary Club, keeping attendance, reporting each month with the help of your executive secretary to the district is not just for the purposes of crunching numbers and creating statistics. When used as a tool, you will be the first to know if there's a member attendance problem and can address before they become a serious problem. You can also notify the president and the board if club's attendance is dropping. This could mean that meetings need to be improved to keep the club members' motivation to attend very high. If you allow your role to become just the enforcer of Rotary's attendance rules and not pay attention to the causes, the club will suffer. Take the time to keep accurate records and report them on time. Melanie, Sergeant at Arms may be the most often overlooked office in Rotary. So many of us take for granted the work that is involved in setting up the weekly meetings so that it is attractive and meaningful for all of you. Your work has a direct effect every week on the quality of the club meetings. Realize that every club member is dependent on you every week for a good meeting, not singing though. Your praises may not be sung as often as they should, but each and every Rotarian appreciates an orderly and properly managed meeting that is on time. You also set the tone for the weekly meetings by having greeters and other Rotarians available to cheerfully greet and introduce visiting Rotarians and guests. 
make each week a positive experience for not only the visitors, but club members as well. If we leave each week with a positive attitude, our work and family benefit, and you help make that happen. Directors of the Rotary Club of Gainesville, as directors and Avenue chairpersons, the club has voted to be led by your wisdom, enthusiasm, and experience. Learn as much as you can about your area of responsibility. Use the Rotary International website for ideas and means of accomplishing your tasks. Without your willingness to organize the projects for your club, the club will gradually die away. Not only that, but the community will suffer because Rotary did not come to their aid when most needed. The world will lose a bit more peace and understanding if you do not pursue a project or funding for you somewhere in the world where there is need. The Rotary Club of Gainesville needs your time and energy to make this a great year for our community and the world. <clears throat> Listen to David, Pres President David's goals and objectives and determine how best to organize your area of responsibility to support those goals. Listen to RI President Shakar Mehta's goals and dreams and help your club support his efforts to make this world a better place, not only for ourselves, but for our children to live and to work. Now, I'd like you to repeat after me when I give the oath of your office. We're gonna start with you, Mr. President. I do solemnly pledge that I will faithfully execute the office of president of and that I will, to the best of my ability, support the district governor and Rotary International and that I will uphold the constitution and bylaws of this club. Thank you. Now, officers and directors, and if those of you <clears throat> who are directors are in the audience, if you would also please stand and repeat after me. I do solemnly pledge that I will fulfill the duties of my office in the Rotary Club of Gainesville. to the best of my ability that I will support President David and will abide by our club's constitution and bylaws. Awesome, thank you, you may be seated. To our outgoing officers and directors, though you are retiring from the administration of this club, your continued active involvement in this club is extremely important. Thank you for your past and continued service. Help your president and your governor, as well as the other clubs in the district, to continue to be a strong supporter of the Rotary Foundation and our district initiatives. We have a vibrant club, club and a growing district because directors and officers in each club over the years have worked hard to make their club and our district the best that it can be. Our district is one of the leaders in the world to giving to the foundation. The 2021-22 theme for Rotary is Serve to Change Lives. Share all that Rotary has been for you and for the world with all those you come in contact with this year. My charge to you, the officers and directors of the Rotary Club of Gainesville, is to let your members know of what Rotary does and wants to do. Create an atmosphere where every club member wants to get involved. Plan a year of programs and projects carried out most importantly with love. They will inherently be more effective and will penetrate more deeply into the hearts and minds of those we serve. And by so doing, you will make this better, you will make this world a better place for all of humanity. Congratulations and good luck, 2021-22 officers and directories for the Rotary Club of Gainesville. Thank you. Good afternoon, Rotarians and guests. I'd like to, before I get started, I, I need to personally thank you, Reverend Catherine, for doing such a special invocation and bringing your, your patient along with you. I know it wasn't hard or it wasn't easy getting here, so thank you.
Uh, folks, I, I want to start by just telling you that um, it was several weeks ago that past president uh, Matthew, sitting over here very relaxed now, he said, um, he said, David, you need to be thinking your, your first point of presidential privilege will be determining who you would like to install the new officers. So I thought about it for a minute, but I, I, I just knew uh, Grace would do a fantastic job. What, what do you guys think? She's pretty good up here. Thank you, Grace. Awesome job. What a, what a great slate of board of directors and officers she installed too. What do you guys think about that? Got a good, good group of folks kicking off the year. I mean, we, we really got some hardworking, dedicated Rotarians here leading us coming up. It is an honor and indeed a privilege for me to be your Rotary Club of Gainesville president. Our club is full of committed individuals, folks committed to the ideal of Rotary, the object of Rotary, the ideal of service as a worthy enterprise. Today I'm going to discuss how I see our club continuing this commitment to service and how we may rather naturally embrace this year's Rotary theme, serve to change lives. But first, I gotta get this microphone fixed, pardon me. Awesome. Awesome, Jeff. Thank you. Jeff's um, a musician in his spare time. Quality musician. But first, I, I want to take the advice of um, a handful of past presidents, specifically Helen Gilstrom, Jenny Van Hart, and Jeff Sims, who suggested I kind of begin uh, a little bit lighter and, and maybe tell you a little bit about myself, reintroduce myself and, and tell you about um, my own personal Rotary experience. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some of that also. I, um, I was born and raised here in Gainesville. I'm, I'm proud to say that. I'm a graduate of Gainesville High School and Elon University. Professionally, I'm a financial advisor with an office in Northwest Gainesville, where I do fiduciary investment advisory services. The majority of my free time is spent with my family that I introduced just a few minutes ago. Waiting on a photo here, we got a photo. I'm going to proceed. Megan is incredibly supportive and loving. As a wife to me and a mother to Cecil. She has a stellar reputation in the community, in the dental community, as an endodontist. She does root canals. I'm also really proud of Cecil. I'm proud of the young man he's become, the way he treats his family, the way he treats his friends, and how he sticks up for folks in certain situations. Okay, so here we go. We've got a recent photo. This, this is a great photo when, when we get it up. It's a... It, it, it was taken um, actually during a, a surprise Father's Day weekend trip to South Charleston, South Carolina. We had just finished uh, a round of golf, 
which is something we, we like to do a lot of. Um, we, we spend a lot of time outside together. Since Cecil was about five years old, I've been coaching his, um, well, really just about every single youth sports team he played on. It's kind of one of those things where you volunteer when the kid's five and then the parents ask you it when basketball season comes and soccer season and football season again. So that, that was just a, a unique, fun thing I got to do. So back then and, and still now, pretty much all of our Saturdays are spent together, generally outside and participating in some kind of a sporting event or attending, watching a sporting event. Jenny Van Hart has done a tremendous job this past year as program's chairperson. Scheduling speakers in the pandemic has been a challenge, but Jenny's shown us it's also been an opportunity. We've had um, a, a great number of kind of some, some high-ranking folks in, in the Rotary International Organization chart, organizational chart and some just some folks that, that exemplify Rotary service. If, if you remember, I, I don't know how many folks, I, I know we had some attendance at this meeting, we, live and Zoom, we had, um, we had a past international director, John Smarsh, speak to us. And he spoke to us via Zoom. He talked about a project he was passionate about called Hand Wash. Hand Wash is a collaborative initiative basically to provide sustainable clean water and sanitation to the entire country of Haiti. I was especially interested in John's presentation because I had just recently heard and seen him deliver a fantastic talk to a group of us during president's elect training. He then talked about his experience serving as club president at his home club of the Rotary Club of Naples. John's a, he's a really a, a neat kind of easygoing type of guy. You just kind of can connect with him pretty quickly. He's a successful businessman in the um, moving and storage industry. So when, when he took over as Rotary president of his club, he just, he said, man, we're gonna take service to the next level. And he just committed to that. So early in his presidency, probably at a forum kind of similar to this one. He told the club about his plans to concentrate on specific projects, projects that he had identified as, as just fitting nicely with Rotary's six areas of focus, and that he was going to encourage everyone, almost mandate participation in these projects. He told us some members were really excited, you know, ready to get to work right away. And then that there was another group of members who also excited had, had gotten more re-engaged with administration and had taken an interest in the club bylaws. He told us how surprised he was to find out that this group looking in the bylaws, we're not just researching the bylaws to see if this service requirement was okay, but also to see how to remove a club president. I, I, I thought that was a great story. It got a lot of laughter when John told it. So, you know, clearly John was a well-intended and impassioned Rotarian, committed to service in his club. His mistake was attempting to push his idea of Rotary, and his idea of service onto everyone else. Rotary is a global network of 35,000 clubs, 1.2 million members. All these members are committed to the ideal of service. We all share that. But each member seeks, serves, and participates in Rotary in their own unique way. Opportunities to serve come in many different shapes and sizes. My good friend Ben Campen 
called me one Saturday morning in May of 2015, said he needed some help with something. Ben had been driving, uh, providing transportation to and from Rotary for Brent Williams during Brent's battle with ALS. Um, he, Ben, was going to be out of town due to business obligations coming up over the next several months over the summer. And he asked if I could step in to help drive Brent in his absence. How honored I was. Really, before then, I, I knew Brent more for his kind of just impressive stature in Rotary, his Rotary accomplishments, his gregarious personality, and that deep baritone broadcaster's voice that many of us remember. I'm going to take a moment here because I think um, uh, there's, there's a number of us who, haven't, who never got to meet Brent, and I know that the rest of us would like to remember him. I'm, I'm going to just take this time to, to thank Naomi Williams. Where are you, Naomi? Thank you for these wonderful photos. And Elena Frazier, thank you. These, these are, we got some really neat photos. Um, there in the center is kind of Brent's, that was his rotary photo as, as Naomi described. And then I, I love that one because that, that's just kind of how I held Brent before I really got to know him. Uh, but uh, getting to know him, you, you see him more in his, um, in his, in his true spirit. And I think that's what this kind of collage has captured. Um, Brent out at Hatchet Creek, uh, Brent over serving in Cambodia with Richard's organization, Sustainable Cambodia Abroad. That's, that's the, the type of servant Brent was. Many years ago, during Brent's life, I recall George Mazio describing him in a talk he gave to the club. He said Brent had always possessed this, this sort of kind of innate, powerful drive to serve. But before becoming a Rotarian, he didn't have an effective way to apply it. George likened him to a rocket engine strapped to a golf cart. It was only through Rotary that Brent found and became the big carrier jet that allowed him to touch lives locally and globally. After serving as our club president, Brent would become district governor, later the regional coordinator. He earned the ET and Van York Service Above Self Award, awarded by our club. And he also earned the Distinguished Service Award ordered by the trustees of the Rotary Foundation. Our district has a special award now given annually called the Brent Williams Spirit of Rotary Award that Ben Campen is a proud recipient of. So back to Ben's request. Ben would show me how to assist Brent getting in and out of the van that had been equipped with a ramp and special straps, locking straps, to secure his wheelchair in place where a passenger seat would normally go. The other day I was working on this presentation and I was looking through the text history on my phone from that time period back May, June, July, August of 2015 and I, I read, um, read a text from Ben, from, from Ben, uh, this was sent to me after my, my first, uh, first time I drove Brent, I, I woke up that morning to this text from Ben that said, GM David, that's, that's Ben's good morning. Brent told me he very much enjoyed you taking him to Rotary yesterday. You're a good guy, David Gracie. Have a great week. I, I just, I, I say that, I, I wanted to give you that very 
carefully restated quote because that just had such an impact on me. Over the next several months, I would spend precious time with Brent, forging a significant and meaningful friendship with a wonderful man that I otherwise would have known as just someone beyond me in Rotary. Thank you, Ben, for such a rare opportunity to serve. I can't say that my service changed Brent's life, but it changed mine. I'm going to tell you one more quick story before I close. This one doesn't really involve other Rotarians, but I think it helps illustrate my take on our theme. Megan and I each grew up spending quite a bit of time over at Crescent Beach, and we still do. It's a special place for us. We love being over there. It was there on the beach one Saturday morning at sunrise in October of 2003 that I asked her to marry me. After she said yes, we just went for a walk on the beach. And we saw this, this beautifully, beautiful, completely intact starfish. Uh, like I said, we've both been going over the beach a long time. We, we see this starfish. I go over and pick it up and look at it. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of warm and it's, it's got these, the tentacles or whatever under it kind of moving. And I'm like, wow, this thing's alive. So we, we kind of observed it for a minute and just kind of said, wow, that thing is just, that is perfect. It's beautiful. And then we agreed, just hurl it back in the ocean. We continued walking, and I'm telling you, if we didn't see like 40 or 50 starfish, and it was just, I hadn't seen that before. I understand, I've talked to people, this occasionally happens, certain type of tides. We kept picking them up, taking a look at them, hurling them back. I don't really know why we were compelled to do that. It just seemed like the, the natural thing to do. A few weeks later, while we were still engaged before marriage, this is a very special, special time in our lives that lots of us remember very well. Um, we heard a sermon from Father John Phillips over at Holy Faith. The sermon was about service, and he told this story about a, about a boy who was walking on the beach picking up live starfish and throwing them back in the ocean. And, um, you know, there was, I guess, some kind of a cynical guy that um, said, um, what are you doing there, kid? You're, 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 that's a waste of time. You can't save every starfish on the beach. You should spend your time doing something more productive. So the kid looked over at him, picked up another starfish, hurled it in the ocean and said, it matters to that one. Rotary Club of Gainesville is full of unique service opportunities presented in many different settings. I encourage you to seek out those opportunities or create new ones. Our club has proven many times over that we will support a worthy new project with dollars and manpower. T.J. Pache continues to plan fun and effective service fellowship opportunities on Saturdays. It's kind of, he's, he's kind of blended the whole service fellowship thing. It's beautiful. I, I say join him. Get out there and join T.J. I also know we have some new construction projects planned out at Hatchet Creek. And Wesley Eubank, along with Feastmaster Jay Nordquist, will be recruiting folks to come out there and, and get some fresh air this summer and do some work. Hopefully that's going to be in the morning time, Wes, that we do that. Great. 
wherever your interest lies, please consider getting involved. Join a committee and experience in person what this club has to offer. In addition to being full of service opportunities, our club is full of wonderful people. I've said it many times on the, the times that I've, I've spoken from this podium that for me, the sweet spot of this club, of the Rotary Club of Gainesville, my experience has been participating in the service and fellowship opportunities with fellow Rotarians, building meaningful relationships and friendships. With the gratitude you'll feel as you serve to change lives, one of the lives you change may be your own. I'm going to close with a, a uh, nice quote that um, I've, I've actually I've seen this quote before, but um, this, this came from a, a book that Naomi Williams gave me a few weeks ago. It's from Paul Harris. Rotary changes us and those we serve. I believe we can change the world one life at a time. Thanks, everybody.